When you're in search of a hairstyle that suits you the best, face shape is probably one of the first things you think about. Because everyone around you is telling you that the hairstyles you can pull off will depend on your face shape. Which is true, yeah. But your face shape alone doesn't tell the whole story. So today I'm going to talk about why finding our face shape gets confusing, why we get so fixated on identifying our face shape so much, and what other factors we need to look at in order to really understand the styles that would suit us the best. No one else gives you these kinds of tips, okay? So make sure you stay tuned till the end. Alright, so let's first talk about why it's so confusing to find our face shapes. When you browse online for information on face shapes, you'll notice that there's really a ton of resources out there. And while some of them might give you somewhat of a varying or contradictory information, most of the information out there tells you to focus on three things. The facial outline, the length of the face, and your hairline. So if you have a smooth facial outline, then you're an oval. From an oval, if you have a shorter face, then you're a round. And if you have a square hairline, then it makes you an inverted triangle. But here's the confusing part. What if you have a smooth facial outline, but a narrow or a triangular hairline? Then is your face shape now considered a triangle? But when you search for triangle face shape, it says that triangular faces have a strong or a sharp jawline. So then, does that make you something in between an oval and a triangle? What about if you have a heart-shaped face, but your face is long? Does that now make you an oblong face? Or if you have a short heart face, are you now considered a round or a square? Here's another factor that adds to the confusion. It's the shape of your chin. According to what people say online, Scarlett Johansson has an inverted triangle face shape. But what would happen if the shape of her chin was rounder? The shape doesn't quite look like a square because Scarlett doesn't have sharp angles in her jawline, but with the wide forehead, the shape also doesn't quite look like an oval, and her face isn't short enough to be a round face either. So then, what would we call this shape? So ultimately, the reason why finding your face shape gets confusing is because we're trying to look at too many factors all at once. Everyone's face is unique not only because our features themselves are all different shapes and sizes, but also because even with similar features, there's countless combinations of these features and proportions that makes your face different from everyone else's. And when we try to take all the different factors into consideration at once to decide on a single shape, there's bound to be many, many, many exceptions to these rules. So then how should we be looking at face shapes? Let's look at the three factors that we normally consider in determining a face shape. Let me talk about these individually to explain what visual impact these factors actually have on the face. I'm gonna start with hairline because I think out of the three, it causes the most confusion. A square hairline can make your forehead appear bigger. So even if your horizontal proportions are of equal length across the three parts, someone with a square hairline will appear to have a bigger forehead than someone with a round hairline. On the opposite side, if you have a narrow hairline, the forehead appears smaller even though the horizontal proportions are equal between these faces. Either way, the impact that different hairlines have visually has more to do with your proportions. So different hairlines can contribute to which section of your face gets highlighted more. Because like I explained with my previous videos about bangs and small foreheads, having a big or a small forehead will either draw more emphasis to the area or draw the emphasis downwards to the rest of your face. Next, let's talk about the length of the face. The overall length of the face definitely plays a role in determining what kind of styles you can pull off. But more importantly than just the length of the face itself, what we also need to consider is the effect of the horizontal proportions and how it can visually make the face appear longer or shorter. Like I mentioned in my video about prominent noses, faces of the same length can appear longer or shorter based on their horizontal proportions. So even if you have a long face, your face might appear shorter than it actually is. Or even if your face is not long, your face could appear longer than it is. So the length of the face is an important factor in deciding on the styles that would suit you. But again, it also has more of an effect on the visual proportions of your face rather than the shape itself. So that leaves us with facial outline as the last factor to talk about. Facial outline is the biggest factor to consider in determining the actual shape of the face because, well, it outlines the shape of your face. Well, duh. But like I explained with Scarlett Johansson as an example, the shape of your chin can also make things more confusing depending on how prominent your chin is. So then, in identifying the face shape, 
if we remove the hairline, the length of the face, the shape of the chin, then that really leaves us with two areas to focus on. The prominence in your cheekbones and in your jawline. My very first video on this channel was actually about face shapes and how you can categorize yourself into one of four shapes by looking at your cheekbones and your jawline. In that video, I jumped straight into explaining what the four different shapes are, but this is the actual explanation behind why we should only be looking at cheekbones and jawline and nothing else in determining the shape of your face. To give you a quick recap, if you have little prominence in both your cheekbones and your jawline, then you're an oval. From there, if we add more prominence to the cheekbone area, then it's a diamond. From the diamond, if we add prominence to the jawline, then it becomes an hourglass. And lastly, from the hourglass, if we remove the prominence from the cheekbones, then the shape becomes a square. I've listed the four shapes in this specific order to show you that these shapes fall into a spectrum. So depending on how prominent your cheekbones and jawline are, you could fall anywhere on this spectrum. I do explain this with specific examples in my first video about face shapes, so if you want to learn more, definitely check it out after this video. But I'll just give you a warning that this was my very first video and I was very, very awkward in front of a camera, so just FYI. So what identifying your face shape essentially means is understanding which part of your bone structure is more prominent and how balanced they appear in proportion with the rest of your face. And from there, based on whatever your standard of beauty is, you can decide if you want to highlight your bone structure more or if you want to soften them more. In Western standards of beauty, prominent bone structure is something to be celebrated about. It adds vitality and confidence to your look and it makes you look strong. In East Asian beauty standards, smooth and less prominent bone structure is the more desirable trait because it adds softness to your look. So even if two people both have square face shapes, one person might want to enhance the prominence in their jawline while the other person might want to soften them. There's also the idea of balance and harmony. You might think that you want to accentuate your cheekbones more, but when an area of the face is accentuated without taking into account the overall balance and harmony of the face, you could end up looking really unnatural. Remember that there were also factors we left out, like the hairline, the length of the face, your horizontal proportions, etc. So those factors need to be added back into the equation in order to make a holistic decision on what suits your face the best. So identifying your face shape is important because it tells you about your bone structure, but like I showed you, it's not the only factor that determines what kind of styles would look best on a person. There's so much more to consider than your face shape alone, and the reason why we get so fixated on finding our face shapes is because we want one simple answer and we want to make it as easy as possible. But in reality, finding your personal style is going to take some time, but it's the process of learning more about yourself that makes things more interesting. In my next video, I'm actually going to go over some makeup tips that I use personally based on my own skin tone as well as my own proportions. So if you're interested to learn more about how all these theories can actually be applied practically, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in my next video and until then, stay neat and stay gorgeous.